12 years after Tron, 18 years before Wreck-It Ralph, there was an animated series that built on the premise of the prior and explored some of the possibilities of the latter, a fully realized digital world that exists inside computers with programs interpreted as living beings inhabiting a thriving metropolis. A world of beings that simultaneously depends on users from our world as the creators of everything that is and fears us as all-powerful destroyers we can and sometimes must be. Hi, I'm Dan Larson and this is the History of Reboot. There are three eras in the story of Reboot. It began in 1994 and extends all the way through 2018 with frequent extended breaks that made it very difficult for the mythology to find its audience, or rather, for its audience to find it. The first era began as a fully computer animated series in 1994. It was the first fully computer animated series ever. It's the story of a guardian named Bob, his friends Dot and Enzo Matrix, the wise advisor Fong, and a whole bunch of binomes and sprites which make up the general populace of the city called Mainframe. Bob the Guardian is a program compelled to protect the city of Mainframe from malicious intrusions, aka virus programs, most notably the brother-sister tandem Megabyte and Hexadecimal. With the help of his wristband-based key tool called Glitch, he can manipulate the digital world in ways that other inhabitants cannot. One of Bob's responsibilities beyond thwarting the plans of viruses trying to infect the system is to compete in games against users. See. As the day-to-day -day events of life in the city of Mainframe take place, occasionally a giant energy cube, a game cube, appears in the sky and overwhelms an entire block and all of the inhabitants therein. These game cubes, a term coined by Reboot years before Nintendo's usage in 2001, are manifestations of the users, people in our world, starting a video game. Anybody within the proximity of the cube when it lands is drafted into whatever game the user has chosen and must fight for their survival. Once inside the GameCube, guardians like Bob reboot to act as one of the game characters to help fight back against the users and prevent the entire block of the city from being destroyed and the inhabitants becoming nullified. Reboot was created by Gavin Blair, Ian Pearson, Phil Mitchell, and John Grace. It was produced by Mainframe Entertainment, Alliance Communications, and BLT Productions. If you're old, like producer Greg and I, you're probably already very familiar with the early work of Blair and Pearson. They created the wireframe character animation for the music video Money for Nothing by Dire Straits, released in 1985. They even call back to it featuring the two appliance delivery men, Sal and Harv, as a band called The Dyers in the episode Talent Night during the first season. But 1985 CG character animation wasn't up to the level they wanted for a fully animated series. It would be six more years before the processing power and rendering would get even close to the degree of detail they needed to tell their story, and another three years before they would be able to create full episodes efficiently enough to put together a series in 1994. Also, you've got to wait for the technology to be there to do this kind of thing. Hmm. Well, how long has the idea been worked on for, like, what, ten years or something? Ten years. Eight to ten years? Yeah. The reboot adventures take place here in the mainframe. One of the best things about living inside a computer is you can surf the static on your hoverboard if you're good enough. That said, the simple blocky look is responsible for reboot being set in the computer world to begin with. The limitations of computer animation to render lifelike textures, organic shapes, and complex environments inspired the creators to create a story around a world that was supposed to look like that. Reboot began its broadcast life on Canadian television channel YTV and then soon after in the United States on ABC television, and that is where the chaos begins. In order to get something to air on US television, especially television aimed at young viewers, you have to clear the gauntlet of the Board of Standards and Practices. Many a program knows what it's like to be roasted in the depths of the Board of Standards and Practices, I can tell you. The board's main job is to make sure that there is absolutely nothing that could potentially have a negative influence on kids in any way. The rule, probably, is don't show sex if you can show drugs, don't show drugs if you can show violence, don't show violence if you can show racing, don't show racing if you can show people dancing, don't show dancing because it's too much like sex, repeat. The creators of Reboot had a story they wanted to tell in a way that they wanted to tell it. These standards and practices made it difficult to do that. Female characters had to be desexualized because, you know, they were female. Kissing wasn't allowed because that might lead to dancing. If there had to be a violent conflict, it was preferred that it be resolved non-violently. 
Reboot aired one full season in the United States before being canceled by new ABC owner Disney. The creative team was halfway through production of season two when they found out about the cancellation and spent the rest of season two production trying to reconcile the newfound creative freedom with the uncertainty of the future, even going so far as to reveal in the final episode of season two that Megabyte's ships were called ABCs. Where season one and the first part of season two were episodic, the last part of season two was a longer story arc not previously possible as part of ABC's Saturday morning cartoon lineup. Reboot was going off the air in the US, but not in Canada. Production of the show would go on and would be better for it. It's the ABCs. They've turned on us. Treacherous dogs. But it wouldn't go on immediately. Mainframe Entertainment took some time to work on a property with a bit more name recognition. Hasbro's Transformers Beast Wars. A bold new direction for the Transformers brand and a potentially much larger audience for computer-generated, serialized, animated storytelling. Season three of Reboot was broadcast in Canada on YTV in 1997. It was the first look at what Reboot could be without the burden of US standards and practices and allowed the creators to move characters forward in ways they couldn't previously, letting them grow, upgrade, change and evolve over time with storylines that continued from episode to episode instead of being resolved in 22 minutes. The show became noticeably darker, more mature, with heavier themes, not to mention the degree to which computer animation had improved in the few years since Reboot first aired. Season 3 saw more complex and more detailed character models and environments. Season 3 also let the creators end the series their way. The city of Mainframe has been taken over by the viruses Megabyte and Hexadecimal. It is the darkest possible ending for the city, the characters, and the show. The only way that Bob believes he can save it is to intentionally let the whole system crash in the hopes that the user will restart or reboot the entire world. Two years later in 1999, Cartoon Network picked up Reboot Season 3, and US audiences finally got to see what Canadians had already been talking about for two years. After airing Season 3, they also aired Seasons 1 and 2, giving viewers a second chance to connect with a show that they might not have been exposed to the first time around. And then it was cancelled. Again. But hey, cancelled from US television didn't mean the end the first time, and it didn't mean the end this time. Despite a proper series ending at the end of season three, three years later in 2001, a fourth season was released in the form of two 90-minute direct-to-DVD movies. This fourth season would allow the creators to dig a little deeper into the origins of the city of Mainframe, villains Megabyte and Hexadecimal, and give an even larger sense to the world within the computers. Cartoon Network once again served as the home of the series in the United States, breaking up the two movies into eight episodes. Those eight episodes were shown at night during the Toonami animation block. Warning, incoming game. Mainframe is mine. Oh my. Sprite, we need your help. Enzo, your zip cord. Hack, slash, backspace now. Scared Mega Brit? Alpha New Merit. Hmm? Bob, use Glitch. Glitch, why? Thanks for the data. Get him. Way to go, Sprite. Yes. Reboot action figures, each sold separately. In 1995 and 1996, Irwin Toys, a toy distributor and manufacturer based in Canada, released a series of Mighty Max-style mini playsets, as well as an entire line of action figures based on the show. While it wasn't necessarily a show designed to sell toys, the best way to market your cartoon is to have some kind of presence in the toy section. And it would have been an absolute crime not to release a video game. In 1998, Electronic Arts released Reboot Countdown to Chaos for the Sony PlayStation. It takes place early in Bob's tenure as a guardian of the city of Mainframe and was developed by the team that developed the show. Despite the overall negative reaction to the gameplay, the story is canon and was developed after the restrictions from these standards and practices had been removed. For the content-starved Reboot fan, there is plenty to appreciate. A final line of 10-inch figures were released in 2001 to coincide with the release of the fourth and final season. That last episode would be the final last episode of the first era of Reboot. Reboot's second era began with three of the four original creators of the show leaving mainframe entertainment. Pearson, who had been CEO, left in 2001. Blair, the director of operations in 2002. Mitchell, vice president of operations in 2005. In 2006, Mainframe Entertainment was purchased by Rainmaker Income Fund and was renamed Rainmaker Animation. 
after four seasons of reboot and an incredible 13-year portfolio of other episodic and feature-length computer-generated animation, including but not limited to Transformers for Hasbro, Barbie for Mattel, and the Spider-Man animated series starring Neil Patrick Harris on MTV, Rainmaker announced that the next step for reboot would be three new reboot films with the first to be released in 2008. Rainmaker was going to use the power of the internet to harness the enthusiasm of the existing fan base and cultivate new fans ahead of the films. They promised a bold new direction of openness to the process of making those films, and they were going to start where all successful movie franchises start, a crowdsourced online comic. Book. <laughs> They partnered with ZerosToHeroes.com, who would facilitate a forum for fans to vote on five different pitches for potential storylines. Fans could even submit their own ideas and artwork that would then be voted on by that same community. It was the model of creation by committee, surrendering the decision-making process to people who you wouldn't even hire to work for you on that project. What could possibly go wrong? The hope was that they would have the ultimate insight into marketing to fans. What worked, what didn't work, where there were opportunities to improve or make slight changes, what they hadn't taken into consideration, the thing that plagues us throughout all media creation, even today, is that the fans don't actually know what they want until you show it to them. A webcomic called Reboot Code of Honor was the result of all the traffic and voting and votes. Fans were encouraged to read, comment, like, dislike, make suggestions, share, and keep in mind that this wasn't necessarily going to have anything to do with the film that was in production, and oh yeah, that release date is now 2009. In July of 2009, the webcomic was moved out from Zeros to Heroes account locked access to the official Reboot fan site where it was available to anyone who wanted to read it. And there it sat, for anyone who wanted to read it. I don't think it's there anymore. I tried to find it and all I got was a page that said I needed to update my Flash player. So... <laughs> None of the three potential reboot films were produced. The website is no longer active, but new reboot content has been created. Era 3 began in 2013 with the announcement of a new CG live action hybrid series in development called Reboot The Guardian Code. Fan were warned ahead of time that this wasn't going to be about the original characters, that if they appeared, they would be relegated to cameo appearances, that, hate to say it, no one was interested in buying an updated CG version of the original show. Reboot The Guardian Code was not exactly a direct sequel, not exactly a full reboot. It follows a group of high school kids, users, who become guardians fighting against original villains virus it was not exactly a direct sequel, not exactly a full reboot. It follows a group of high school kids I'm in a lot of pain right now, so we're just going to finish this and then I'm going to go to the emergency room. <laughs> reboot The Guardian Code was not exactly a direct sequel, but not exactly a full reboot. It follows a group of high school kids, users, who become guardians fighting against original villain virus, Megabyte, and the forces that brought him back. The first 10 episode season hit Netflix in March of 2018 and YTV in June. It received mixed reviews. Some said the pacing was way too slow. It took way too long to get to callbacks to the original show. Some thought that the animation wasn't even as good as the original show that aired 23 years prior. Some reviewers thought that the inclusion of a longtime reboot fan as a character that was portrayed as a stereotypical basement dwelling, game playing, still living at home nerd was offensive. Wait, these aren't mixed reviews. Not for nothing, but Guardian Code did receive some award nominations, including Outstanding Directorial Achievement by the Directors Guild of Canada, the WGC Award by the Writers Guild of Canada, and a Daytime Emmy nomination for Hannah Vanden Bygart for Outstanding Performer in a Children's Family Viewing or Special Class Program. And the reviews weren't bad enough to stop a second 10 episode season from being released in September of that same year. The real world Guardians continued to thwart the efforts of Megabyte, once again joined by his sister, Hexadecimal, to corrupt all the computers in the world amidst their daily struggles with homework, hacking, and hormones. In 2010, Shout Factory acquired the home distribution rights for the original reboot animated series and in 2011 released the whole thing in a collected box set that, according to the Amazon reviews, would be perfect if not for poor mastering job resulting in pulsating audio that is only noticeable when it's quiet, or when there's music playing, or when people are talking. The Code of Honor webcomic may or may not be on Zeros to Heroes depending on the functionality of your Flash media player, and or if it's not really there. Guardian Code, as of this video, is still on Netflix. With 47 episodes spread out over the course of seven years of television broadcast time, the original reboot animated series ended on a cliffhanger. One of the original creators, Gavin Blair, when asked, has declined to comment on what the plans were for Megabyte and all of our heroes just in case they ever got a chance to tell that story. 
The original show also received several awards, including Gemini Awards for Best Animated Series and Outstanding Technical Achievement, and nominations for Best Children's or Youth Program Series and Best Sound. In 1995, they won an Award of Excellence and Best Animated Program by Alliance for Children and Television. Reboot was a technological milestone when it debuted in 1994. It laid the foundation for a company that would go on to develop some of the most widely viewed computer animated content on television, changing the look and feel of cartoon entertainment for an entire generation. It developed a dedicated fan base that kept it alive long enough for producers to believe that it could one day return, reimagined, refreshed, renewed for a new era, a new generation of fans to push it into the next era. Thanks for watching. Please hit like, hit subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Thank you very much to those of you who already are. If you're in the position to help the channel grow, please visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash toygalaxy. Share this video and let us know in the comments down below if Reboot was your thing personally. Any show that was rolling out CG at that time got the old stink eye from me. Uh, just looked like it still had a ways to go before it was worthy of my attention, which is ironic because I was also the guy stacking up uh, saved games on PlayStation uh, memory cards whenever there was a cutscene so I could rewatch them over and over again. What can I say? I'm an enigma wrapped in contradictions. <laughs> Cut.